Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Soap the Great, and I'm playing on the Two Crafty Vanilla Amplified server. So you can kind of see what I'm doing right here. I am removing this line of blocks because we are done with this. What we need to do is get rid of all these, these dirt blocks, and then we're going to fill in with some water back here so that the guardians will get flushed down to the collection area down below. So, so yeah, I'm going to just do this right now. And while we are, uh, you know, actually, let me just tell you kind of how this episode is going to go, just to give you an expectation. So we've got to remove all the dirt blocks from underneath all of these gates. Okay, so that's our first objective. And then what we need to do is come back in and get some water ready on this line right here and then let that go so it will cover the whole whole set of this packed ice structure okay and then once that's done we can put in our water up in the spawn tank so so yeah what we're gonna do is kinda like the um, the collection area episode we we did a lot of jump cuts and we're gonna have to do the same thing here so uh, so yeah that's just to give you a little bit of an idea some expectation of what is gonna go on and uh, so I need to clear this out and then we will come back and get the water ready for this so let me finish this and I will see you in just a moment well, there we go, ladies and gentlemen, we are done, at least with this side, not the other side, but what I wanted to do is real quick show you how this process is going to go. So I'm just going to put a piece of ice right here, then we'll break it, and then you see what happens right there? It kind of flows down first and then out, okay? And we should see that it does not pop over the edge there, is that correct? Yes, okay. That's good. Now, the thing is, I want to do the trick where a piece or a, a water source right beside it, like that, merges. But that's not going to happen so that I can, I don't have to use ice all the way across. I can just use this bucket and fill up. So what I'm going to do is just place dirt like this, and that's going to force the infinite water source to form right in the middle right there. You see that? And then you go like that. You might know that trick, you might not, but hopefully that might help others in the future. So I'm just going to go, and I guess that's the eighth one all the way across. So what we're going to do is fill, fill this all the way in. That way we get a water stream all the way down the whole line here. So what I'll do is just go back turn on well I've already got a speed 2 beacon going so I want to get through here as quick as possible and this is just what you do okay so back and forth and you see the infinite water sources spreading out as we go okay it's because I didn't have another bucket on me I did have some iron but you know the the ice is a lot easier to carry around so you essentially if you carry a stack of ice with you you've got 64 sources of water on you whereas with a bucket you've got one so now I used to I used to wonder why in the world do you see these youtubers carrying ice around why is that such a big deal and then I started doing projects like this and that's why so we got ice started out with one and then I still had my water bucket that I usually carry with me just in case I start going around in the nether. So what we're going to do now is uh, actually one more thing. Let's come down here and set up one of these water buckets right here. Nope. Put it against that one and I'll go over and get another because we need the ice for up top. I can't do the the infinite water source trick up top. I have to do it um, with ice to make it a lot easier. 
and uh, yeah so that's what I'm concerned about um, so now what we do we just uh, I'll stand on the the dirt here and just come all the way back and the reason why we're using packed ice is because that's going to force the guardians to go as quickly as possible down into the collection area and there we go all right so we should see that it completely covers the whole area and you can hear some of the some of the noise yeah all right and it does not come down here and that's good let me eat a little bit here get low on hunger let's see if this is going to work we'll put it right here Does that work no well that that it would help if i didn't hit the the hopper but yeah so i'm going to finish doing this and uh and yeah then i'll get to the other side and once we are done with that all the way done we'll take a look and see what uh, what we need to do to get started with the top portion. Okay, see you in a bit. Well, ladies and gentlemen, both sides are complete. And I just wanted to let you know that the water on both sides, the flowing water, is within the bounding box of the Ocean Monument, which means that we occasionally get some spawns. Take a look here. Yeah, we're already getting some results as I throw a piece of steak. Yes, see, there we go. And it's not it's not great. And, you know, it's not very efficient. But we're already starting to see some of the results of all of that work. And you notice, kind of jumpy. Yeah, this is going to be a lag machine. Because we've got stained glass, flowing water, hoppers, and some crazy spawn conditions and the game is just going nuts trying to figure all of that out let's get up here and we're going to get started on the next part of the build and that is filling in the spawn tank with water okay now most most designs that I've seen have gone with putting a layer of dirt in and doing the um, the infinite water trick which is all well and good but oh my goodness look at the frames yeah when moving not good not good we drop down to below 30 sometimes that's pretty bad all right so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna use ice and we're gonna fill every bit in and I gotta make sure to stand on the glass and not on the ice so this should prove interesting indeed because uh, once the once the ice melts then we're going to have some problems it's just gonna just gonna turn into water and yeah that's going to be problematic for us if we're not careful all right, so we'll just go like this, and while we are doing that, um, we can chat a little bit, okay? So, uh, let me just tell you where the move process is at the moment. We are getting ready for listing because things are done on our end um, with the house preparations. Um, we are, we've uh, just gotten off the phone with the realtor. She's going to come by, get the room measurements, and then pictures are coming next week, or the photographer's coming next week to take pictures of everything. And then that means we can get the house listed. And, and yeah, so we'll be well on our way to getting the current house sold. And it's kind of bittersweet, i got to tell you. Um, you know, we've had a lot of good memories in this house. We moved here a little bit less than a year after we got married. And, um, you know, we started our family here. And uh, we've learned and grown and changed and had 
good times and it's tough times and you know it's it's just bittersweet it's amazing how locations can do that for you and um uh, yeah that's uh that's where the bittersweet comes in we're we're looking forward to what is in store for us in our new place wherever that may happen to be but uh but yeah and we we understand the the joys that we have in uh, in what we're leaving behind so yeah anyway so that's uh, you know that's just me waxing philosophical again uh, do do bear with me while I'm doing this kind of grindy block placement here I don't think I'm gonna have enough ice for the whole structure I just did some basic calculations and yeah, I don't I don't know. We're going to need somewhere on like 30 no, no. 59 stacks? Is that right? 59 stacks of ice. I don't know if I don't know if that's going to be enough. Um another thing I'm kind of worried about is that once we start getting all this ice in and it starts melting, then um we're going to be dealing with guardians once again. Yeah, so so I've still got to be careful, and uh, I you know, I was looking at my boots and I realized oh I don't actually have feather falling. Take a look at this, protection four on breaking three and depth strider three. I thought I had feather falling, but apparently not, and I think that's why um, you can take a look here. I'm at 16 deaths now, and that is due to mismanaging my hunger. As a result of cleaning up what I believe was a prank, um, yeah, you know, it was a prank. It was, and but I didn't find the sign at first. And Aerie had to show me the sign. Um, but yeah, maybe I'll show that to you sometime later, once we get this thing filled up or uh, this guardian farm done. But uh, yeah, let me let me finish this up. All right, so let's also talk about some a subject that's near and dear to my heart. You've heard me talk about this already, probably pretty much on every one of the recent episodes, and that is my garden. So I've talked to you about uh, the current current garden that I or current gardening technique that I have been using. Um, and then one that I used before. So currently it's square foot gardening, slightly modified to fit my particular situation. But I've also done hay bale gardening and I found that wasn't really worth it. And uh, mostly because of having to fight slugs. I'm not a fan of slugs, I'll tell you that. Um, but what I want to talk to you about is what got me into gardening in the first place? So when we lived up in Central Virginia, I see I've talked to you about that as well, so you've got a little bit of context there. When we lived there, I was much younger, and really that was the first time that we had had a house house as a family. And one of the things that my dad made sure to do was help us to enjoy the fact that we had that house. And so we had a decent amount of land, it's about an acre. I don't know what that translates to in um, in other forms of measurement, imperial or, or uh, metric, but uh, or it'd be what cubic meters, I guess. I don't know what it is, um, so you have to bear with me there. Um, so we had an acre. It was mostly wooded, with a little bit of patches of of. Uh, space here and there breaking through the um, through the woodedness if you will allow me the word smithing there um, and in those patches of sun that we would get through the woods we built little bits of garden and so it wasn't it wasn't square foot gardens it was um, row gardens and and hills and that's really where I got my start. And from that point on, 
I was hooked. We had a pretty successful garden the first year. And I think really the first time you do a garden after the land not having had a garden, it, it does pretty well because, um, you know, the nutrients have had time to rebuild within the soil. And, and overall, it just does really well. And I really wonder if that fools a lot of people into continuing to garden when otherwise it would not be that fruitful for them. Who knows? Um, again, I'm, I'm not sure as to, as to what that might, might, uh, might be, but uh, it has certainly been the case that the first time at that house we, we were pretty successful and then after that um, it was a lot harder. That's when I learned how to amend the soil and I learned about um, putting compost in and, and making sure there were proper nutrients within the soil. And uh, yeah, so so it was good. It, it ignited a, a passion within me and I've, I've just enjoyed gardening ever since. And uh, so that's really where it started. If you so we're kind of going in reverse order, reverse historical order for me for this hobby. Um, but yeah, gardening was a hobby before video games, which is um, kind of interesting. Um, I didn't discover video games until much later. And there you can hear we're getting guardian spawns already, which is somewhat disconcerting. I don't have invisibility potions on me, so we may start getting hit by their beams who knows who knows so um, uh, yeah let's see let's see what they're gonna do you see any more they'd probably be over in that part now since I'm in this area and mobs don't spawn within a 24 block radius around the player uh, you can hear them yeah they're getting hmm Yep, we're going to start getting some lag here soon. But what I want to do is make sure that we get this whole thing done for this episode. So I am going to cut this part here. And, uh, and yeah, what we'll do is come back once this is done. And we'll come in and fill in the roof because that is going to dramatically help. The spawn rate so I will see you in just a moment ladies and gentlemen guess what we are about to place the last of the ice all right there we go so the ice is done and now what I need to do is go grab some lighting source of some form oh man the frames oh boy yeah and then I had a little accident over here I placed a piece of ice and then in trying to get it back I knocked out another block oh my those frames maybe we'll just try and go slow here yeah there's a lot of flowing water and stained stained glass wow this is this is pretty bad so can you can you see that do you see that yeah it's uh, it's pretty rough all right so what we're gonna do is grab some glowstone. Actually, we need to put away all of that ice. And I had to go back to the ice farm, and I left that, or left uh, my character AFK overnight because we had to run out, or close to running out. Where is that glowstone? There it is. Hmm. We'll see if that's enough other thing is that I have been getting spawns down there and so we should be seeing yeah there's that zombie again I need to go light up the caves right around there so to stop hearing that but we should be seeing some items here yeah there we go yeah you can and you can hear them falling down so we do have some water streams already going yeah, this isn't too bad. It's starting to pick up. Yeah, you hear, you hear it? 
I don't know where that one is. But you can hear that? Yeah. That's the... The, uh... Guardian up against a cactus taking damage. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be putting glowstone on top of each of those glass pillars. I was going to put uh, sea lanterns, but we don't have enough sea lanterns. And we might not have enough glowstone, I'm not sure. But yeah, we definitely don't have enough sea lanterns. So, what, uh, what I'm going to do is put the glowstone, and then what we're going to do when all of the ice is melted, because it all should melt with this glowstone here, we're going to cover everything with prismarine bricks. I might try and put some sort of a design, maybe not, and then I'm going to cover the whole thing in slabs. So that that way that top part will not be spawnable. Actually, it shouldn't be spawnable with all the glowstone. We'll see. I'll take a look. Um, we'll, but uh, I have to wait for all of the water to or all of the ice to turn to water and then put on the roof. That way when I put on the roof, the water will get an update and start flowing down because a lot of times it's not going to automatically flow. But let me get started on this. And when we come back, I should have the roof all done. All right, I'll see you in a bit. Well, there you have it. Uh, the roof is on and all of the water streams are flowing downward. Let's take a look at what kind of spawn rates we're getting. We're going to be blocking off some of these. There you, well, that's not too bad. Not too bad at all. So what we're going to be doing next time is getting the item elevators going. Because right now all of the items are going into these droppers. And yeah, we need them... It, it would just be kind of it'd be kind of rough for somebody to come down here and check all of these droppers Wow, that's kind of noisy But you can hear it is it is working. It is working. So this is good I don't know what the rates are going to be, but what we're going to do next time is make item streams and we're going to make item elevators up to the eventual platform area, which is going to be up in the sky. Because what we want to do is take all of this out of spawn range. We want to keep just the ocean monument bounding box in spawn range. And so we've got to keep it, um, keep that bottommost hopper area where the cactus are. We'll keep that within 128 of the player. We've got a little bit of room to, to play around. I've already lit up that island and that island. I don't think there are any others within 128 blocks. But who knows? We'll go, we'll go in the middle. I am getting some lag issues, so occasionally I get kicked from the server. We've seen that before with, with dealing with the Ocean Monument. But uh, yeah, we're going to go up to... Oh, let's see. Why... We're at Y62. The bottommost portion here is 42. So we have 128 plus 42, that's 170. So that's what we're going to go up to. We're going to build a little platform up there. That's where we're going to start. And then we're going to have item elevators going up there. But that's going to be next time. We've gotten a decent amount done this time. So the farm itself is, well, it's mostly done. I mean, uh, now everything else is just things to make it easier for me and the fellow two craftians. But hopefully you enjoyed. If you did, a comment down below is appreciated. Or uh, any, any other suggestions you might have, any questions, feel free to leave them for me. Or catch me on Twitter at MCSoapTheGreat. But that's going to be it for now, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.